Okay, in this presentation we are looking at uh, statistics with our worked examples. Now this is primarily intended for actuarial students who are learning both R and statistics for their preliminary, for their first set of exams. But really this particular series can be used for anybody who's learning statistics uh, with R for the first time, like undergraduate students and so forth. It is not primarily statistics, it is not primarily R, it's a sort of how to use one in conjunction with the other, that is the main focus. So just as a quick remark, it is no, uh, this accords with the CS1B curriculum that actuarial students will use, that's essentially introduction to pro R programming, probability distributions, uh, fit fitting linear regression models and so on. Now this would correspond to question four of an exam, okay, so it's bit more complicated, a bit longer, and I actually will probably break this up into two videos. Okay, so the first thing we actually have to do is the question directs us to load up a particular data set, uh, a marketing budget uh, data set, marketingbudget.csv. So essentially what we have to do is make sure that's in our home directory, okay. Uh, I'll go into a different uh, presentation about how to do that and how to check everything's okay. So there's a lot of work there just doing that one step, okay? Um, I go, so the command there is read.csv. Now, people who are familiar with R already might note that there is other packages that will also allow you to uh, read in data sets. Uh, there's a thing called tidyverse, and in tidyverse, there is a command called read underscore CSV. Just as a quick remark that the actuarial exams follow a base R framework. I'm guessing the reason for that is such that the student is, uh, will be able to translate their skill set from base R to Python or other things. Whereas tidyverse is very specifically R related. Anyway, so we're going to save that as a data set called budget. Okay. Um, by the way, really, I think typically I should have a arrow there, chevron and a minus sign. I just put it in equals there out of, doesn't really matter, but there's a, just for the sake of code consistency, I probably should have had the assignment operator there, which is an arrow. Anyway, I'm going to call that budget. Okay, so I have a data set called budget. What I should do actually is just check that I have everything in shape. So there it is there. There's, this is just the head uh, which is to sort of say inspect the top of the data set just to see what it looks like. So seemingly I have three columns Well, it, apart from this index column, I won't I'll ignore that. Okay, so I have three named columns the month the spend and the sales Okay So that's uh, that's just the top six. That's by default It's just to sort of get get a look at it because I don't really I should probably inspect it more, but I just want to sort of move on now to with the rest of the questions. Okay. So five years of marketing expenditure and company sales by month. That's what the data set contains. Construct a scatter plot of the data. Comment on the relationship between the sales and the spend of the plot. Okay. Now there's a number of approaches of doing uh, uh, approaches that will allow us to do this. Uh, the main command there is plot. Okay, and the two variables are budget dollar sign spend. So essentially, taking out the spend column out of the budget data frame, okay, or just having that sort of ready, and also taking the sales column out of the budget data frame, okay. So this is sort of like an address. This is they're both contained in in the budget data frame which we imported. And this is just actually sort of highlight or selects particular columns from that. So we have essentially two variables here, spend and sales, both found in budget. And that is our main argument for the command plot. So that's what is would look like, okay, when we plot it. Uh, we can actually make that plot much prettier. In the first instance, this is what we're asked to do specifically. But there are things you can do if needs be, such as uh, adjust the, the, the axis, uh, the axes labels and so on. We can enjoy, adjust the plot character, the colors, add a subtitle, a headline title, and so on. There's also another R package called ggplot2, but again, as I sort of said, the actuarial exams and so on follow a framework that is specifically base R, okay? 
so the above scatter plot shows a positive linear relationship between marketing spend and sales data so you can sort of see it there from the bottom left the it goes up to the top right okay and it seems to be a strong positive linear trend okay so just as a remark if you wanted to make it a little bit easier to look at there are things you can do for example you can change the plot character just type in pch equals uh, pick a number between 1 and 20 just try them out and you can also specify the color there okay uh, just to make it a little bit easier to work with just to highlight that fact okay so part two calculate Pearson's correlation coefficient between sales and spend okay so like what just like we've done we just select the two variables we want to work with budget sales and budget spend and we apply the core command to that now that's it that just calculates the correlation coefficient here it's 0 0.97061 and so on 0 01669 okay now this command will allow us to calculate correlation coefficients other than the Pearson correlation coefficient it doesn't pop up very much but there are ways of you know you can use this very same command with an additional argument okay at the end that uh, so that you could uh, calculate for example this the Spearman rank coefficient or the Kendall tau coefficient other types of correlation coefficient the Pearson correlation coefficient is the main one you sort of see in undergraduate statistics and so on but just to remark that there are other ones out there okay and you can use this command to specify them now i won't get into the the reasons why you would use one over the other for the most part 90 percent of the time you probably if somebody says the pearson correlation coefficient they really mean or the if somebody is talking about correlation they mean the pearson correlation most of the time the next part is part three perform hypothesis test for the null hypothesis that Pearson's population correlation coefficient is equal to zero against the alternative that it is positive that is to say that the correlation coefficient is greater than zero you should report the p-value of the test and a clear conclusion so first off we just specify the two variables so the two variables from the budget data frame are spend and sales okay what we're also going to do is specify the method be very precise about it that it is the pearson correlation coefficient here is the alternative equals greater okay so this is specifying the alternative here that the it is a positive correlation coefficient greater here means greater than zero if we leave that line out for example if we only do these two lines the not the alternative hypothesis would be that it is equal to zero okay or sorry not equal to zero which is not particularly helpful put it this way being more specific about it alternative equal to greater alternative equal to greater that's a bit more precise and what more of more interest to us scientifically it where relevant you could actually if you want to go uh, what to check if it has a negative correlation coefficient in other relevant data sets where that would be relevant you would just say alternative equals less okay so the command there is core.test, okay. Uh, this is the output, Pearson's moment, product moment correlation. There's the variable names. That's the test statistic, the degrees of freedom, okay. Uh, the p-value there, 2.2 .2 by times e to the minus 6, or by 10 to the minus 6, Dean, okay. The uh, alternative hypothesis is that the true correlation is greater than zero. So that is an important line to read, that one there. So that was where the alternative equal to greater than, that's the effect of that. If uh, that constructively the null hypothesis uh, is that it is not greater than zero, okay? Uh, and if you leave it out, it's not equal to zero versus that it is equal to zero. Anyway. So we have a 95% confidence interval for the, pop, the correlation coefficient, 0 0.95 for 2 and 1. Now obviously it can't go above 1. There's special ways of calculating the Pearson correlation coefficient, but necessarily the range of possible values is bounded by minus 1 and 1. And there we have the sample 
uh, estimate again, which is the Pearson correlation coefficient estimate. So the p-value is 2.2 by 10 to the minus 16, showing very strong evidence against the null hypothesis. That is to say, we reject the Pearson correlation. We reject the null hypothesis. Null uh, we reject the hypothesis that the Pearson correlation coefficient is equal to zero and conclude that it is positive. Okay. So there's a lot of work here. I'm actually just going to sort of start into this part here. I just show how to do the linear regression and just actually make a quick statement on a couple of things. But we'll probably progress on to uh, start here and uh, at in the next video as well. So the question is, perform a simple linear regression analysis of the data and your data should include the estimate of parameter sigma, which is to say the residual standard error. Okay, so the main command is as follows. Uh, I'm just going to call my model reg, re re regression. Okay, so if you fit this, this creates an object, a regression model object in R. Okay, now, uh, perform a simple linear regression analysis on the data. Now, it's not very clear there about what causes what. So this line here is very important, okay? And essentially what we have to do there is, it's deliberately kept vague, I feel, just to sort of make us think, what's the independent variable and what's the uh, response variable, the deep dependent variable, okay? So here, essentially what we want to do is see how much our uh, expenditure affects sales. So our budget in, mar in terms of marketing and how much that affects sales. Remember, this is what we have control over the expenditure or in the, this is as far as the, this is, uh, example is concerned. And this is the response to that intervention or that change in the variable that we control. Okay. So essentially the sales are our, our response to how much the expenditure is. Okay. Um, so sales, we might verbalize that how much essentially sales and how they are ex explained by expenditure, sales explained by expenditure. That is the data set there, budget, data equals budget. This is LM, now that's an L there, L for Lima, M for Mike, LM, that means linear model, which is essentially what a, a, a regression model is. It's a family of models there called linear models and LM is the command there, okay? So we just save that in memory uh, as regression. Now, if you just type in reg there, R-E-G, you, you get a very simplistic output that really doesn't give us all the information that we want. The key thing what we want here is the summary of the regression model that we've created, which we are calling reg, okay, or R-E-G. Uh, this is the output that we would get. First off, we would get the, the uh, an expression of what the model is, just to just double check. This is very interesting, actually. This is about the residuals. It's sort of very useful and very interesting, the, the idea and the concept of residuals. And we'll come back to that shortly. That just gives us a quick summary of the how the residuals look there. Now, to be honest with you, I've never really sort of paid that much attention to that particular line, but I do pay attention to the residuals. Okay. Now, this is the key part of the model. This is where we get the correlation co or the regression coefficients. Okay, here they are. That's the this the intercept estimate there, three four three one point five five nine two, and the slope estimate there. This is a simple linear regression model, so we just call it can call it slope and intercept. So ten point five three one zero. Okay, now the key things here are the standard error. Uh, they're interesting enough, but essentially what they are used to calculate is these values here. The test statistics in this column, okay, 1.057 and 30.476. And these test statistics are used to calculate the corresponding p-values. So the p-value for the intercept estimate there is 0.295 whereas the p-value for the slope estimate, which is to say the spend variable, is less than 2 by 10 to the minus 16, 
okay that's essentially just a quick way of saying it's a very 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 small number okay uh, we also notice the stars there just actually correspond to the range of values that the p-value would lie in we call those significance codes and this is in the so this is between 0 and 0 0.001 which means it's a sort of way of indicating this is highly significant if you want to interpret like interpret the output like that i wouldn't really advise it but it's a good visual cue so we're asked for the uh, sigma value which is the residual standard error and there we have it there it's on that line there that's an interesting um output that we'd be interested in that is 10650 on 58 degrees of freedom we also have these r squared values which are an indication of the goodness of fit of the model there's two of them there uh, this is the 0 0.49412 this is another one called the adjusted r squared 0 0.9402 they both should be fairly close to each other now uh, we're not going to do this in this particular example but you just actually notice that this relates to another test that we could carry out further uh, on a linear model which is an ANOVA procedure and this will be a, a summary of that output we're not going to look at that in this particular instance so I think that's a lot there so I think actually what I'm going to do is leave it there that's a, a plot of the scatter plot okay so I'll tell you what I'll just come back to that in the next presentation I'm going to stop it there I'm going to fix that as well all right